And that angel represents the Spirit of God that's within every believer. And I'm not talking about an unsaved person. I'm talking about a saved person here. I wish I could say we were immune for these kind of struggles, but we're not. I'm not immune. I can preach till I'm blue in the face, and I know a lot of time I do that, but I'm still not immune to those things. I still battle with the flesh. It's the greatest struggle, I believe, as we try to do what God wants us to do. You start wanting to serve God, and, and that little devil on the shoulder, the, the flesh, the, he, he's going to start welling up in, within you and tell you every reason not to. He's going to distract you. He's going to tempt you with sin. He's going to do all this stuff that he don't want you doing that. The devil does not want you serving God. The reason this is such a battle is because we don't fully release the Spirit within us. It's a prominent theme throughout the New Testament. Paul is, talks about the Holy Spirit, but he talks about the Spirit of God that is within every believer in Christ. Every person that has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior has the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the same thing within them. Every person. A prominent theme in Paul's writing, even in some of the Gospels, a prominent theme is that. Release the Spirit. Let the Spirit loose that's within you. The Holy Spirit is constantly telling us to release Him. Now, when I say release, I don't mean like we're holding the Spirit within chains or ropes or anything like that. See, the Holy Spirit is, is constantly talking to us and constantly telling us, constantly convicting us, constantly speaking to us, says, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. And the problem is, if, if, if we don't listen to him, or we become, turn a deaf ear to the Spirit when he's talking to us, and we don't want to hear it no more because it's counter to our desires. You see that battle? It's counter to what we want to do. Now, the Holy Spirit is not making us go around like robots and all this kind of stuff all the time. Do what God wants. Yes, I will, Spirit. Go over here and do this. That's not what it's all about. We have freedom. There's nothing wrong with having a little fun and, you know, doing different activities and all that kind of stuff we like to do, whatever your hobby is. There's nothing wrong with that. The Spirit don't mind. My goodness, that doctor opened the door up, didn't he, when he said, why do you feel that way? And what did the Spirit say? The Spirit spoke to him, didn't it? Because Hobie had to release the Spirit within him. Now we all hold the Spirit back. I, I think it's difficult for us to fully release the Spirit like God wants us to. Because the flesh is always going to win a few battles. I've been around long enough to know that. The flesh has got... Man, the flesh can hold on to you tight. There's things we like about the flesh. We like certain things. And we don't want to let them go. I, yeah, I hear you, Spirit. I hear you. But I, I fall like that. No. It's a battle. You know, we don't release the Holy Spirit or fully release the Holy Spirit because we don't understand the magnitude 
of His presence within us. Now folks, I've said this many, many times, and I'm going to say it again. God is in you in the person of the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God is within you. You know, I started to preach that, and I struggled with this message all week. I don't know why. It did not come easy. Hopefully it comes out better. Maybe, I don't know if I struggle with it. Maybe they're better. Maybe, I don't know. I can figure that out. But I was looking at some scriptures that said, you know, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I started to preach a message that I may do sometime. Is your temple clean? Or clean up your temple. I come under some, some conviction with that. I come under some conviction. I said, ooh, ooh. I'm going to step on my own feet there a little bit. I hate to say it, but I'm just being honest with you. I'm too honest. But we don't understand the magnitude of the presence of God within us. I think that's that's the immensity of that. The God that created, a, a, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the God that created the universe and everything we see and all this kind of stuff is within us. And we don't fully utilize that power, that power of Pentecost, that the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. Just as, just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and the ear has not heard and which has not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love Him. For to us, God revealed them through the Spirit, uppercase S. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit, lowercase s, of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might, might know the things freely given to us by God. Now, Paul is sometimes you have to really read what he's saying and think about it, pray about it, look at it, and try to decipher what he's saying. But first, Paul starts out in verse 9, and he quotes from Isaiah. And he tells us essentially, we really don't comprehend all the things that God has in store for us. We really don't comprehend it. We don't understand it. We cannot fathom all the things that God has in store for us. After 61 years, I found that to be true in my life, in my family. I, you know, 10 years ago, I would have never thought I would be a pastor of the church. And it's turning out to be one of the greatest joys of my life. Even in the ups and downs. Saved, but I can quote release the spirit within me. 
You know, Paul goes on and says, all things, all these things are revealed to us by the Holy Spirit that speaks to our human spirit. Now, I'm going to probably, if the Lord continues to lead me in this direction, I'm going to talk about next week. Spirit, uppercase S, the Holy Spirit, to spirit, lowercase s, the Spirit of God and our human spirit. There is a communication there. There is a connection. Again, God leads me in that direction. We'll look into that a little deeper. God did not give us a worldly spirit, but the Holy Spirit. What? 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 So that we may know the things of God. God wants us to know the things of Him. And with having the third person of the Trinity within us in the presence of the Holy Spirit, we've got that connection. Do you see that? Y'all need a loud amen here somewhere. You know, come on, God, come on, let me know that you're seeing this connection. Make this next week. You're seeing this connection between our human spirit that God gave us and then the Holy Spirit. Some don't release the Holy Spirit because they don't under, again they don't understand the immensity of what they have. They still look with worldly eyes. They hear the Spirit say, "Turn me loose, turn me loose, loose me," but they're afraid to do it. Or they have their own agenda. You need to release the spirit within you to live a productive Christian life. It's not going to happen. I believe you can be an unproductive. Now maybe this can get into. I believe, yeah. I believe you can be an unproductive Christian if man, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you can go to heaven. Because yes. I, I, there's talk about rewards and all that in heaven. But I, 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 you can be unproductive and Christ be your Lord and Savior and you still go to heaven. But that's not God's best. That's not your best. You know, not releasing the spirit within you is like driving around in idle speed all the time. Most of your vehicles, I don't care if you got a little four-cylinder, you got a, a, a Prius or some kind of lower-powered car. You have most, they, you know, there's not a vehicle out there that's tuned up right that you can't get 60 to 70 miles an hour, 60 to 80 miles an hour on the road. Am I correct on that? So what keeping the spirit bottled up and not releasing the spirit full, it's like, okay, I'm going to go down to the mall of Georgia. Down here, I'm going to put her in drive. And I'm going to get down there. You'll make it. You'll make it in a, a day or so. It's like traveling horse and wagon days. You'll make it. They're going to pay people honking a horn that you can't go on the interstate, but that's against the law. You can't go on the interstate, you're going down 124, you're going on. Okay, people will be past you left and right, you know, it's creating a dangerous situation. But that's what it's like. I just got that car, and I don't like riding a lawnmower to the mall. You know, get on a lawnmower and do the same thing. That's what it's like. You know, we have the ability to put that thing in drive and, and give it a little gas or diesel or whatever you're driving, and you get on down there with a reasonable amount of time. What, ain't that what you're going to do? <coughs> I talked to you, you that far as far. Now, you told me you wasn't doing about three miles back coming back. <laughs> but that wasn't of your own choice, though. You just want to release that fourth pile on the hood and get on back. <laughs> you know, so that, that, that's the point. You want to release that horsepower you have under the hood. That's the same with spirit power. You want to release it and get going forward. Move on. 
You're moving, even in aisle speed, but it takes a long time. Things in your life. Things in the kingdom of God. Reluctance or ignorance on releasing the Spirit is a major problem in this denomination. It is a major problem. We're all the But I see hope. My, I will say this. Not to notice he ever see it or not, but the Gainesville District, the man that leads the Gainesville District, our district superintendent, is a spirit filled man of God. I've been around him too much. He encourages us to release the spirit. Release the Spirit within us. Release the Spirit within the churches. I don't know about the others because I'm not around. You know, the method, I mentioned it a couple weeks ago. You know, you don't have to catch the Spirit. You don't have to catch the Spirit. You have the Spirit. You know, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to catch Jesus and say, Jesus, give me the Spirit. He said, you got it. You got it. You don't have to ask it. You got it. Just release Him in your life. Uh, Luke 4.18. I'm going to read it to you on the screen. I'm going to read it. Blaine's version of it, or a personalized version of it. Jesus is starting his ministry. He walks into the temple. I think we find this in Luke, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. I know. Uh, he walks into the temple. He picks up the Bible. He goes to the Old Testament starts reading from Isaiah. And he reads we, these words, which are found in Isaiah 61, verse 1. That the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, yeah, release of the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind and to set free those who are oppressed. And He goes on to say, those words are fulfilled in me this day. I think it goes on something like that. Well, let's take this and put yourself. I always used to have a problem with this scripture because I didn't feel like I could say that. Christ saying the Spirit is upon him. He has been anointed. Then I realized this applies to believers in Christ. If you put yourself and said, the Holy Spirit is upon you. If you're a believer in Christ, the Spirit of God was on Christ when he said those words. If you're a believer in Christ, the Holy Spirit is upon you. The Holy Spirit is upon you. Because the Lord has anointed you. That's what anointed means. When they anointed you with oil, they poured oil on you. You have been anointed through Christ with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been poured all over you. <laughs> so much that there goes in the pores of your skin. Because the Lord has anointed you to bring the gospel to the afflicted. He has sent you to help the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to set free those in bondage to the things of this world. Release the spirit that is within you. To bring the gospel to the afflicted. He has sent you to help the broken hearted. To proclaim liberty in Christ. And to set free those who are in bondage. My goodness, the world is full of people in bondage and sorrow. Probably all examine ourselves. We're in bondage to a little bit of something our own self. We all need to be set free from things that hold us in bondage. We all need to be set free from those, the flesh that keep pulling us back 
and not letting us live up to the potential God wants us to. Release the Spirit within you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.